Uh, today we're out here talking about what we take when we go out on a long ride. My saddle, this is kind of considered a high back saddle, it's a little bit more comfortable. There are better ones than this, but this works for me. I always carry a slicker on my saddle. Susie likes a poncho, but I like a slick, slicker. This goes all the way down to your boots. And I always try to take a, a blanket. Might want to take a nap out there somewhere. But it just, for mainly for emergency pur purposes. This is a stakeout rope if I want to stake my horse out if I got to stop for a while. Uh, I always use a breast harness. The reason I, I use one, and a lot of people, you know, that's just for roping and working cattle and stuff, but you get going up and down these high places and that saddle will start sliding back on you. We found that out years ago when you're going up steep trails. That uh, <clears throat> breast harness will uh, keep your saddle intact and I always use a rear girt just for balance. We don't really need it but in case we have to really get into a lope it kind of steadies the saddle and uh, helps you balance better for me. Uh, this is a padded seat. That's kind of nice nowadays to see that. This is my bridle. I, I use different bridles. This happens to be a hackamore. I know a lot of people don't like them, but that's up to them. You can find a million different opinions, uh, but that's just what I like. I do have snaffle bits we have to have used in the past. But uh, in later years, we've been using the hackamore. We, our horses are pretty good. We can ride them with halters. Uh, we went on one trip and got all the way over there, uh, about a half a day's drive from here, loaded, unloaded the horses out of the trailer, and I'd forgot to load up Susie's bridle, so she rode for three days with a halter and a lead rope. Just doubled up the lead rope and used it as reins. And uh, that's not the best way, but when you that far out, you know, you just have to make do sometimes. Another thing is a uh, good set of saddlebags. These aren't leather. We do have leather ones, but I kind of like these better. Uh, and I carry a lot of stuff in these. Uh, just pieces of leather. Uh, there's uh, wood for starting a fire out there. Uh, there's a sack of alfalfa pellets. I probably need to use them up. We've been in there a while. But uh, in case your horse gets loose, if you get downwind of them, they'll smell them. Mine will anyway, because I I treat them to them pellets quite often uh, to just where they'll come to me, because uh, you might think they're trained, but they get out there in the wild places, and they revert back. They might not come to you. Just scraps of leather, uh, and then the other one, the other side. This is a water container for the dogs. Uh, trash that we hadn't taken out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's some uh, a pack. I think I've got some little tools in it. Now this is emergency, another emergency pack. This is a, uh, a little cheap slicker. Some paper to start a fire. You get cold, there's matches in there too. Uh, here's my glass case if I take my glasses off uh, from time to time. Here's an extra set of leather reins. These are roping reins actually. 
I could use that the other day. But uh, it's just a uh, extra set. I'm taking the snap off of one side uh, for whatever reason, but just extra, extra stuff. Uh, now, one thing that's pretty important is, uh, or to me it is, this fanny pack. We both carry these on our saddles. We've had these for years on them and we get all kinds of stuff. It's called Vet Wrap. You can buy it at any feed store. You can order it online, but it's for wounds to wrap your horse if they... There's a lot of cactus out here. So if it looks bad, you can uh, wrap it and try to stop the bleeding. Uh, matches, matches, matches. <laughs> and uh, looks like some fire starter in there. Good knife. Uh, here's some extra gloves. These little camera cases are what old film cases. That's lint. From the dryer in there. That's real good to start. It's real fire. good. But, uh, there's a hoof pick. I don't have all my tools in here. Uh, I like to take uh, some nails and tools where if I have to set a shoe out there in the middle of nowhere. It's either that or run them barefoot over that rough ground. Ride them barefoot over that rough ground back out of there. And that's not good. I know people have done that, but it's better to know how. Try to support yourself. There's another little pocket knife. And uh, there's some just extra cotton gloves. These are roping gloves. What do you used to call roping gloves? There's a extra curve chain. You break them curb chains pretty easy. This is a fire starter. Uh, they're real cheap. That's a real good way to start a fire. You just uh, rake it into, into your kindling. And then uh, uh, throw some sparks on it. Rake, it. rake it here and throw sparks on it and get your fire started. Uh, these are... little uh, antiseptic pack packages. It's got uh, a protective uh, dressing on it. It's, it's like a, a little pad that you can wipe your hands off with, but it kind of for bacteria and stuff. I don't know what this is. It's water pills, I think. Oh yeah, that's uh, uh, alkali pills to make the water better drinkable. Uh, if you have to, uh, we carry on our big packs, uh, we carry a, a filter, filter pump. Forest Service uses them. They might have newer ones than what we've got now, but ones we've got always work. It, it doesn't take up much room. You could actually carry it in big saddle bags, but it's a pump and it's got a real good micro filter on it and it uh, uh, inhibits the Giardia, E. coli, stuff like that, make your water where you won't get sick on the water. Uh, really important. Uh, we've used that a lot uh, for you know because you run out of drinking water sometimes. More matches. Always have a lot of matches. Here's uh, the lid to that thing. That's just a little film, uh, a film uh, cartridge that uh, we had. This is one of the most important things for out there. This is a snake bite kit. You can buy them at Walmart. Yeah, hit right over here. Uh, all that thing there is for, if you got a lot of hair on your arm or your leg. Or it bites you. Uh, get that, take that razor, get that hair off of there. 
uh, because this thing won't work with that hair. This uh, syringe, you attach it. Do my attach, arm on it. Attach the, the cup to that syringe. And this is pretty cool. Press this thing down, and then watch it pull that oh, skin. It does. I and it'll pull that see venom. It. If you get snake bit, it'll oh. pull that venom out of there. And you do that about three, three or four times, and you've got most of the venom out. And uh, we've done it to our dogs a lot. Yeah. Uh, we had never, Susie tried it when she got bit, but it, it, it really requires two people. I couldn't do it because it was between my fingers. Yeah, it was between her fingers. They make different size cups. Uh, here's a small one for a small area. Yeah, show it. Right. And it's the same no, thing. right there. Yeah, like right there. And you see it raise up? And you see it. Pulls that how it's pulling the skin, or it's mm -hmm. pulling that venom out of that. It does suck and it up. You do not uh, cut yourself. That's, that's no. the way they used to do. Uh, but they've got away from that in recent years. I carry one of them. <coughs> in, <coughs> excuse me. I carry one of them in my fanny pack yeah, when I go this, hiking. This is just uh, information on it. Uh, we carry these in our trucks. Yep. Uh, we have more trouble with snakes around here than we do anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> they like it around here. They just, we've had a rash of rattlesnakes in the last two or three years. This but just, I mean, if you, you got bit by a copperhead or yeah, this is cotton mouth, that it's would work good too. For a wasp sting or a bee sting yeah. or a hornet sting. It'll it'll pull some of that venom out. Yeah. And give you a little bit better time to get to the doctor mm -hmm. or the hospital if you're, you know, if the, the things look bad. Uh, these looks like a mess. This is actually hay twine, and Susie braided it up. It's uh, three strands of hay twine, tie a knot in one end, and it just makes a flat braid. But that's real good you can cut it to size if your curb strap breaks or if something on your saddle happens you've got a tie and we carry a lot of those just odds and ends uh, each one of us carries a lot of them it's just for emergency uh, there's some old vet wrap that's probably getting old it's, yeah it's quite words. dry sometimes you can tear off a little bit of it and, it, and then it's good back down in there I like to keep it in a in a plastic thing, you know, a Ziploc bag or something. Keep the air off of it and dry it out. Uh, that's about all. Uh, this is just you can buy a fire starter. That's called fire starter. Yeah, this works good. Yeah, it works real good. But uh, I always carry lots of matches. Uh, we've got some waterproof matches in here somewhere, probably in here. Uh, I've never really used them. I, we always just carry lots of matches to, just to be safe. And it's just an emergency thing. Uh, when you're out there, you need to help yourself as much as you can. Uh, it's not like there's a convenience store down the road or around the corner. Uh, we're not. Well, out here in this high desert, if you get stuck overnight, that fire will really feel good. Yeah. Uh, well, and water, water, water. Yes, water. And uh, one of those water filters is, is good if you can find water. Uh, we have drink water right out of the creek a long time ago, but I wouldn't advise it nowadays. If there's, it was spring I don't water. The system won't let us take it anymore or yeah. what it is, but uh, it's best to use uh, those little pills, but the filter get some of that harmful bacteria. The filter makes it taste real good. And it, and it takes the, the bad taste out of it. Uh, we've used that a lot. We carry a, when we pack in, we carry a canvas bucket. It's actually a bucket, but it's made out of canvas and it'll fold up. And uh, it'll, once you fill it with water, the water seals it and you carry water to your horses if there's a creek nearby. Uh, and you know, you've got them on a picket line Well, you just carry water to them instead of taking them all down to the creek. You know. It, it, it works real good. Uh, 
I put your campfire out. Yeah, and, and that to, you know, to distinguish your campfire before you leave and cover it up with dirt. We, we always take, on the pack, we always take a little shovel and an axe and a saw. Uh, but this stuff is just, just emergency precautions. Uh, most of it we've never used. Uh, we uh, just like to try to be prepared. And my saddle fanny pack, it's quite the same too. Yeah, just about the same thing. A good sharp knife. This here, that's a good brand of knife too. I'm sure a lot of people know it's called a buck knife. I like them. Uh, and it's uh, razor sharp. You gotta be careful with it. But, uh, that's what you want. I usually wear this once we get going. Uh, I don't want it ever happen, but if something grabs me, I'm gonna poke them <laughs> if I can. <laughs> get them off of me. Shoot them or poke them one. I'm gonna show them that that's bigger than their tooth. Yeah. <laughs> well, if something got you down wrestling, you could get it. Yeah. And uh, you can't really be trying to shoot at something yeah. like that because there's dogs around or you know, there's other horses yeah. when you're in close quarters like that. But you can sure poke them with that knife, at least. Uh, or you can lay there and let them eat you. That guy that got killed by that mountain lion, I bet he wish he had a knife. Yeah. Uh, you always take a few extra gloves and uh, put them in a the fanny pack. And these fanny packs are old, but they do the job. And, uh, yeah. I uh, keep them tied on the front of the saddle. So we can get into them fast it's if we need to. It's considered a rolling saddle. It's got the, the small swales. It doesn't have the big wings on it. Like a regular riding saddle, and uh, I just tie them on right here with uh, these little old cotton ropes. They're real easy to untie, and they won't, but they won't come untied. Pretty much. Uh, I always like a lot of things to tie with on my saddle. You might find something you want to take with you or pick up. Or, uh, Tie on. Uh, it's always best to have. Say, well, I wish I had it. Uh, that's that's not a good feeling. No. Especially uh, when them horseshoes come off. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the horseshoes can. Uh, uh, but some of those places. Over there, like uh, there's one particular area over there. Uh, I believe there's over a hundred creek crossings. They call it river crossings, but it's it's running water and it's cobblestone, kind of rocky, gravelly, sandy. Uh, you're just back and forth across that creek. It's over in the Gila wilderness, uh, it, and it goes for that trail runs 40 some miles. That doesn't seem like a lot nowadays, but that's a lot on horseback. And uh, oh, you have to camp. Yeah, you have to out. go in there and spend the night. Uh, I know a fellow that uh, him and his wife they go in with llamas. They like to hike and take llamas. And uh, they took a young one. Creek crossings are tricky. If you do it, just, you know, even though your horse is used to them, they can be tricky. They were crossing one of the creeks. There's this one creek, it does the trail just back and forth across it. And uh, this one llama that had never been back in there and it bolted. And uh, he said it knocked his wife plumb out. It ran into her. Jumped the creek and jumped on jumped top right of on her. Jumped on top of her and knocked <clears> her plumb <throat> out. And she, was, she turned out okay. But things just happen. Uh, and it, it's, there's no help out there, pretty much. Uh, on some of them, some of the more popular ones, you'll see uh, traffic for the first maybe 10 miles or so, but then it kind of plays out. Uh, the hikers 
a lot of the hikers don't want to go much farther than that. Now the hardcore hikers, they'll, they'll go for miles and miles and miles. They just, there's one called the Continental Divide Trail that uh, people go on and uh, it goes all the way from the south of the south border of Mexico or the Mexican border to the Canadian border I believe and uh, people have traveled the whole thing uh, but uh, you just need to be prepared and know what you're doing and hope for the best well, that's about it it's getting hot out here it already. is I'm gonna go in and shave. <laughs> well thanks for watching Bill just want to show his saddle stuff and what we have. See you later from Out West Homestead. There's our helper.